Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Is it as bad as people say it is? Does it deserve the reputation that it has since it came out in 1989? These are questions that I have about this movie. And I think it's worth discussing. It's not as bad as a lot of people would make it out to be. It's got its flaws, definitely. But it really is okay when it comes to Star Trek. Now, you can't compare it to The Wrath of Khan, First Contact. There is no way you can make those comparisons. But does this film hold up? Is it good Trek? These are questions that sh I want to ask you today. And I've got some other things that I want to talk about regarding this movie. Okay, so to set the record straight before we go any further, back in 1989 when this movie came out, I was around 18 years old, and then, my opinion, Star Trek could do no wrong. From Star Trek The Next Generation and the Star Trek movies before it, again, Star Trek could do no wrong, so I was very excited when this film hit the theaters. Right after it came out, I ran to the record store, got myself a, the soundtrack, got myself this mega poster of Star Trek V, which, by the way, I think is a pretty cool cover myself, and just felt like the movie was pretty good. Not as good as all the other Treks that have come before it, but it was still pretty good. But over the years, this movie has definitely developed a reputation for being the worst film of them all, and I'm just wondering... Is it a valid reason? Are these points valid? And is it right to dump all the blame on William Shatner? Okay, so in 1989, as I said, this movie was released, and it really didn't stand a chance. It had so many problems going for it right before the production began. First of all, they, Paramount wanted severe budget cuts to the movie. It was reduced, as I said before, to $33 million dollars. They didn't even bring back Industrial Light and Magic to perform its special effects, which, as you can see in the movie, did not do well. It also had an inexperienced William Shatner at the helm, not to mention the fact that in the same year of release, it would have to contend with Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman, Ghostbusters 2, Indiana Jones, and The Last Crusade. So there were some big problems for this movie right from the beginning. Okay, now this part you're going to find very interesting here because contributing to the Star Trek V dilemma was the fact that people hated Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, this is the one that took me back a little bit right here, and this is coming from Fansided, but apparently the hatred for The Next Generation, understandably for the first season because, you know, they were getting their feet wet trying to figure out the characters and where the show would go, and plus the constant fighting between Paramount and Gene Roddenberry, how the show would take place, was a big issue, and you could see the issues going on in season one. But after season one, it looked like Next Generation had no problems. But according to this, Harv Bennett, in a book, Star Trek Movie Memories, he cites that public dissatisfaction for the Next Generation as a key reason why fans didn't show up for the final frontier. Believe that? The tracks as the next generation was not that popular. And even Stewart was looking for an out at that time, heading into the season three finale. The best of both worlds, Stewart was unsure if he'd return to the series, setting up the final shot for the show where Will Riker ordered the Enterprise to fire on the former captain turned Borg. It is interesting to see how history remembers things because now, over 30 years later, the next generation is the benchmark to many Trek fans, but the final frontier is still near the bottom of most people's worst films in the franchise history rankings. Okay, so to blame all of it on the next generation would be unfair. The film itself did have its issues. And there was another rumor out there that is very interesting as well. It turns out that Gene Roddenberry believed that Bill Shatner stole the bulk of the script for Star Trek V from him. The script that we're looking at here, or the film we're looking at here, Gene Roddenberry had envisioned for the original Star Trek, the motion picture, 
which was completely rejected by Paramount. In an article dated April 23, 2021, Star Trek V, what went wrong with the Final Frontier? Now, this article came from Screen Rant, but it's in the middle of the article that I want to bring to your attention. Apparently, Gene Roddenberry brought legal action against Shatner. Roddenberry's biggest problem with the film, The Final Frontier, was the story, which he perceived as having been stolen from him by Shatner. Roddenberry's original idea for Star Trek The Motion Picture was a script called The God Thing, which was ultimately rejected by Paramount. The Final Frontier storyline bears a number of similarities to Roddenberry's original script for The God Thing, and Roddenberry was under the impression that Shatner had taken his idea without permission and managed to repackage it so that it would be more interesting to Paramount. Shatner admitted later that he might have taken some accidental inspiration from the God thing, as he had heard about the script when Roddenberry was originally working on it. Accidentally or not, Roddenberry was arguably justified in his anger about having his ideas seemingly stolen and deri derived from the final frontier. Now, as villains go, the Klingon commander in Star Trek V was actually pretty menacing and I enjoyed him and I know a lot of people didn't like the idea of the periscope weapon being used but I thought it was a pretty cool idea considering a Klingon warrior even a captain or commander would still want to feel like he's had in the middle of combat now as for the God aspect of the story as far as I'm concerned this is a pretty weak part of the movie in itself the idea of searching for God and they happen to stumble across a planet that actually has a, a godlike creature on it. That's just, I know it's pure coincidence, but still, I just think that this part of the movie was the weakest part of all. Now, I asked before whether anything redeemable or anything good that was taken away from Star Trek V that someone could be happy with. And I honestly, right off the bat, will go with the musical score for this movie. Jerry Goldsmith, as usual, produced some amazing music, and this was no different. It was just an amazing soundtrack to watch, I mean, listen to, excuse me. So is this movie and its failure William Shatner's fault? Okay, yeah, like I pointed out before, there was that story that Roddenberry believed Shatner stole a lot of the work or a lot of the material from another Star Trek project, but at the same time, if that is not true, then is what we have in front of us here, the final product, Shatner's fault? After all, Paramount cut his budget. The, the, the production department involved with the special effects was not hired again, so they went with a cheaper, cheaper company. And it was just budgetary issues plus a writer's strike. Not to mention the fact, as I said before, all those classic movies coming out at the same time that summer in 1989. So it's hard for me to blame the entire thing on Shatner. And to be fair about it, I still don't think this is a bad movie. It's not as great as the other films, but it's still a good Star Trek movie. Well, I want to hear your thoughts and comments on this, my friends. So please, comment below and let me know. Drop... Drop a line. Let me know what you think about this. And if if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you want to consider doing that, that would be greatly appreciated. And for those of you who have, have subscribed, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. Until the next time, my friends, God bless, and I will talk to you.